closest friends But I swear when nobody's around Welcome back to my channel. Um, I thought it'd be quite interesting today to kind of do a skincare myths type of video. Yeah, working in basically beauty and skincare and stuff, I've kind of picked up a lot of things that people kind of have a misconception about with skincare. Um, and I thought it'd be really fun to kind of like put it into a video for you guys and kind of tell you why those myths aren't true. Um, and I think just over time, society's kind of, yeah, conditioned us to think these certain things with skincare that, yeah, not necessarily are true. You guys might think certain things are true as well with skincare and watching this video, it will open your eyes about, yeah, what is right and what's wrong to do with your skincare. So I hope this video helps all of you um, and I hope you find it interesting. So let's get into it. So the first myth I'm gonna talk about today is drinking water makes your skin hydrated. A lot of people have the misconception that, um, oh, my skin is not clear, it's dry, I need to drink more water and incorporate more water into my diet. Um, to ensure that my skin um, becomes more hydrated and clearer, etc. That is false. There's no tests that prove basically that drinking water will basically hydrate your skin, clear up your skin. Um, water is great for you internally, obviously, and it can flush out toxins and um, nasties in your body um, and basically just improve the overall health of your gut and just yeah your insides and stuff like that um, and that will eventually cor correlate to how your skin is looking binge and you eat some sugar or bad foods you might get a breakout etc um from obviously what you're feeding your body um and that is kind of the same with water when you drink water it will flush out those toxins and yeah, your skin might be clearer because of your internally, your gut and everything has been flushed out and it might seem like the water is clearing up your skin, but actually water doesn't hydrate or clear up your skin, if that makes sense. So the reason why it doesn't um, clear up your skin or hydrate your skin further is because there is no blood circulation in the top layer of your skin that allows the water to go there and hydrate it. So that is why there's no correlation between your skin clarity and water. Again, water is amazing for you, so you should be drinking a lot of water anyway, just for your overall health and um, hydration within your body. But in terms of your face, it doesn't actually hydrate your skin um, there. So that is a myth. My second myth is using a cream will keep your skin hydrated. So yes, um, creams do keep your skin hydrated, but have you ever found when you're not wearing your cream that um, you're still hydrated? No. So a lot of people kind of, they think, okay, my skin's dry, I need to put my cream on, etc. And when they're not wearing their cream, they're gonna feel dry and they're gonna feel like they need to put that moisturizer or cream on to hydrate their skin. But there are much more effective skincare that will actually benefit you and deeply hydrate your skin deeper than just the first layer. Um, and when you're not wearing your skincare, you're gonna, your skin's gonna feel normal and it's not gonna feel dry or tight or feel like you need to put that moisturizer on to keep hydrated. So I personally think everyone should be incorporating serums into their routine, especially a hyaluronic acid serum. So what hyaluronic acid is, it is a humectant, so it draws water to it and moisture. So it holds a thousand times its weight in water, so it's super, super hydrating. Um, and it deeply hydrates your skin within 
all your three layers of your facial skin and it will plump your skin um, smooth out fine lines of wrinkles and keep your skin hydrated it will just ensure that your skin is really hydrated um, with prolonged use of course and you won't feel like you will need to keep applying that moisturizer to keep hydrated obviously you with every serum you have to lock it in with a cream so i kind of describe it as with serums the molecular size if we're talking science wise the molecular size of a serum is smaller than a pore so that's how it penetrates so deep within all the three layers of your facial skin so then a cream is a really big molecular size so it's actually bigger than a pore so what it does it just kind of sits on top and seals everything in it doesn't ever really penetrate as deep as the first layer of your skin so we have three different layers of the skin obviously um and yeah it only really sits on top and penetrates the first layer um but obviously with a hyaluronic acid serum it will go way deeper and hydrate um dry and dehydrated skin way more thoroughly than a cream does so yes, you would apply your serum, then your moisturizer, and then yeah, you're gonna be feeling really hydrated. Um, obviously with moisturizers, then you can incorporate different ingredients with your moisturizers. Um, for example, you can get vitamin C moisturizers, you can get retinol moisturizers, you can get so many different ones. Um, and you can obviously, yeah, look into um, adding those ingredients and finding those ingredients in the moisturizers to further benefit your skin rather than just focusing on the hydration once you kind of get that down then you can kind of focus on adding other ingredients in to benefit your skin um, and yeah I would definitely recommend a hyaluronic acid serum everyone needs it I feel like it's great for all skin types dry dehydrated combo oily it basically is everyone's best friend hyaluronic acid everyone needs it i feel like especially people with oily skin they think because their skin's oily that they don't need any more hydration because their skin is already creating that oil um and that sebum but actually the reason why oily skin is creating that oil is because it's dehydrated the skin on your face is trying to create hydration that it needs so that's why it overproduces oil um especially in the t-zone a lot of people get yeah oily in the t-zone and yeah the body's trying to replace that hydration by creating that oil which is why people get really oily so adding that moisture and hydration in to your skin with a hyaluronic acid serum will actually prevent someone from becoming oily because the body's going to have that hydration and then it won't need to create that moisture on top of the skin to replace it anymore because it's already being hydrated by the serum so um yeah great ingredient all around guys and your skin will soak it up completely a lot of hyaluronic acid serums it is not oily if you think um you're kind of scared of like serums because you think they're oily this serum most of the time is not oily um there's really great hyaluronic acid serums out there on the market um yeah just have a google and read up about it but they just soak up into the skin and uh, i feel like once people incorporate this ingredient into their routine they'll fall in love with it because of how quickly it absorbs into the skin how fast it plumps the skin and the results you get you just don't feel like your skin is oily tight or anything like that it just makes your skin feel normal just supple and plump it's yeah it's an amazing ingredient so yes that is that myth myth three retinol and vitamin c cannot be used together so with this myth um a lot of people have the misconception um that's a big no-no pairing these two together when personally i think that um these two ingredients are a power couple and they should be working together to ensure that beautiful glowy skin Basically, I think these two ingredients just make for beautiful skin that 
beautiful skin. It equals amazing skin. So, um, if you guys don't know, retinol is basically an ingredient that uh, speeds up the regeneration process of your skin. So it creates new skin, new skin cells really fast and the turnover of your skin cells, yeah, they just turn over really quickly. New skin comes to the surface all the time. So when you're using retinol, it's great just for everything, fine lines, wrinkles, pigmentation, um, texture, increasing luminosity to the skin increasing luminosity to the skin it is honestly amazing for absolutely everything especially people love using it for anti-aging that's the main thing people love using it for um, because it really does smooth out your fine lines and wrinkles and also prevents them as well so vitamin C is kind of like the little it's like its other half I reckon it's perfect combined with retinol because vitamin C is great for brightening and tightening the skin. So what I would do is use retinol at night and then vitamin C during the day. Um, as a serum, you can have like vitamin C moisturizers and stuff, but obviously I think serums, because they penetrate deeper, they have that smaller molecular size, you're really going to get more benefits out of a serum than a moisturizer. Obviously, if you haven't really used vitamin C before and you just kind of want some more subtle results, then go for a cream, that's totally fine. Um, same with retinols, you can get them in forms of serums and creams. Um, it, depending on the type of retinol and the percentage of the retinol, they will give different results. Um, but yeah, it really is up to you and what you're currently using. You'll be able to find products that fit into your routine. Um, and yeah, so that's that myth. <laughs> myth four, put your eye cream on after all your skincare. So with this one, I'm going to talk about, in science terms, molecular sizes. So with an eye cream, everyone knows your eye area is very delicate. So always a very careful when you apply your eye creams, obviously. You just pat with your ring finger. It's the kind of the most gentlest finger to kind of pat it in with because you don't want to be too rough with it and cause wrinkles, fine lines and stuff by dragging your under eye area. And because of that, eye creams are also created to be very gentle in the eye area. And also because it is a thinner skin, they... An eye cream is a smaller molecular size. It doesn't need to be, yeah. Basically, most eye creams are very, like a, a very small molecular size. Um, and so, when you apply your toner, your serum, your moisturizer, people apply them on, um, and then the last thing they do is put their eye cream on. So obviously, before when they apply their serums and creams on, people kind of yeah you kind of just apply it all over the place and you might accidentally get it over the eye area um and then you go and put your eye cream on so obviously with all of that and then your cream on t your facial cream your moisturizer and then you put your eye cream on your eye cream is not actually going to penetrate what i think is that you should wash your face put your toner on and then you could go in with your eye cream as your second step and then your serum, then your moisturizer. That will ensure that you're getting the right um, benefits out of your moisturizer. It's gonna penetrate and actually work and you're not gonna be spending all that money on an eye cream because some people use really expensive eye creams um, and then they go and put it on last and they're just not going to see the results of the eye cream and it's not going to actually get to that skin because all those products are layered on top and I just feel like that's such a shame people should know that yes just always put your eye cream on before your serum and moisturizer to ensure you're getting the benefits out of your eye cream and you're not going to waste your money um, applying all this beautiful product and for it to just sit on top of skincare not penetrate your skin so yes, um, that is also a big myth um, people need to be aware of um, because yeah, I feel like a lot of a lot of people do that. So for the last myth, it's washing your face once will help get all your makeup off. 
Honey, no. <laughs> no. So, um, I am a big believer in double cleansing. So especially if you're a girl and guy that love to wear makeup all day and you're about to go to bed and you just kind of wash your face off and then you pat it dry and you think your skin, like the makeup's not there and you just feel like you're, yeah, like you can't see anymore and your skin looks clean, you just go to bed. No, that's, no. So actually a lot of makeup gets left over if you just wash your face once or if you just micellar water it and then go to sleep. You need to always be double cleansing. So what I would recommend is double cleansing with your first step being like an oil cleanser basically, like a cleansing oil or, or like a cleansing balm. So oils will actually help break down the makeup dirt and debris and pollution that's been on your skin all day and it will just break it all down um, and you can wash that off and then go in with your second step cleanser which obviously you can cater to your skin type um, so you can use a gel, a foam, um, a cream and yeah just follow up with your second step so obviously with your second step you can go in with a more active cleanser if you'd like or if you want to go more natural um, just make sure yeah that it's gonna really get off your makeup and all the dirt and debris after because wiping your face once with a face like a makeup wipe or um, like micellar water or something like that it's really not gonna get all the makeup off there's still gonna be quite a lot of makeup and build up on the skin and that is basically what will like make you break out, clog your pores and give you more skin issues that you don't want to be dealing with. So double cleansing will actually make sure that your skin stays really clear and then when you've washed your face with those two step cleanses and put your skincare on, it's really going to penetrate and yeah, work much better because all of that debris and makeup has come off. Your skin is clear, your pores are more susceptible to accepting that great skincare afterwards. So two-step cleansing is so, so important. I feel like um, a lot of people don't really know about two-step cleansing. They kind of think, oh, two-step cleansing, it's gonna strip my skin. No, I don't wanna be using a cleansing oil, my skin's oily. But really, if you do two-step cleanse with a cleansing oil and then a cleanser to suit your skin type, you're gonna really see the clarity and clearness of your skin. It will really change your life because before I two like two step cleansed, I yeah I don't even know what I was doing with my life before two step cleansing because it has cleared my skin so much and along with skincare and all that oh yeah it's just made amazing benefits to my skin and yeah i just feel like it's definitely changed my life i feel like a lot of people should incorporate it into their routine and even if you're oily i feel like you still should be using a cleansing oil because i'm combination oily and i love a cleansing oil because it just hydrates your skin as well as just gets all that makeup off and ensures everything is just broken down because those oils do break down all the dirt etc um and obviously going on with I go in with a foaming cleanser, which is for my skin type. It doesn't strip my skin, leaves my skin feeling really clean and beautiful. And just those together just work amazing. And I think I talked about the cleansing oil I used in another video, the Toucher one. So for, with that one, I just apply it straight onto my hand and on my face as it is and just wipe away all the makeup and it breaks it all down. And with that cleansing oil, when you add water, it actually emulsifies into a milk cleanser so it doesn't it's not hard to remove when you try to wash it off it doesn't feel like it's oily and that it's like yeah still residue left you need to scrub your skin or anything like that to get rid of the oil it actually breaks down itself and leaves your skin feeling really soft and smooth like a baby's bottom like you're reborn basically but yeah <laughs> so i would really recommend that one if you are a bit scared of um cleansing oils and adding oils um yeah into your cleansing routine 
so that is all the myths I'm gonna do for today guys um, I have a lot more that I could debunk for you guys and kind of yeah um, expose <laughs> leave that in the future if you really like this video please give it a like and a comment and subscribe down below that really would mean a lot to me if, if you guys could support um, by subscribing and let me know if you like this video and I'll do more for you because I did enjoy it um fun exposing skincare myths <laughs> But yeah, um, I hope you guys have a lovely day and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.